So the next time you're near a keyboard, turn it over, and chances are you'll see the name of its creator, Pierre Laquerti. My uh, great, great, great grandfather was born on St. Valentine's Day, uh, yeah, February 14, 1819, in a small town called Fossville, which is in uh, central France, Europe. And, after applying on a whim, was offered the position. All the Quirties are the same. Garbage. You said what about me? And who denied my forefather his patent? Pierre Lequerti. Pierre was not a thief. Because they weren't really working on a typewriter in the first place. There have been allegations that Christopher wasn't really working on a superior typing apparatus, but rather part of a conspiracy, which was why he was deported from France on treason charges. But in all fairness, he was only charged with light treason. I knew it! I knew that pig ahead was no good! I've got one word for you. Illuminati. You're suggesting that Scholes, Glidden, and Soul were a part of the Illuminati? Uh, no, but, you know, Illuminati in general. Think about it. While La Querty was able to patent his device, dubbed the Literary Piano, in 1868, his work was far from over. The next ten years would be spent perfecting his device, while simultaneously trying to sell it to corporations and the public alike, in an effort to earn his fortune and enjoy the twilight of his life in luxury. Perry always put the uh, Huerte key, that's, uh, that's French pronunciation, uh, next to each other. That was his signature, and he, he spent a lot of time tinkering and finding the best place to, uh, you know, to put those keys. And, and some people even accused him of putting them in such a way that would purposely slow them down when typing. And that's just rubbish. My, my ancestor spent hours upon hours researching the best way to lay those keys out. He used a system developed by Amos Denmore called the letter-pair frequency equation. A bigram, you know. Really self-explanatory stuff. Could you explain it for us, please? I mean, if you just can't figure it out. Bigrams or digrams, as they're sometimes called, are groups of two written letters, two syllables or two words, and uh, very commonly used as the basis for simple statistical analysis of text. They're used in the most, one of the most uh, successful language models for speech recognition and are a special case of engram. Uh, Gappy bigrams, or skipping bigrams, are word pairs which allow gaps, avoiding connecting words or allowing uh, some simulation of dependencies, as in a dependency grammar, and head word bigrams are gappy bigrams with an explicit dependency relationship. Bigrams help provide the conditional probability of a word giving the preceding word when the reaction of the conditional probability is applied. That is, the probability p parenthetical of a word, w nth given the preceding word, w nth minus 1, is equal to the probability of their bigram, or the co-occurrence of the two words, p parenthetical, w nth minus 1, w nth, divided by the probability of the preceding word. Understand? So, on the 27th of August, 1878, LaQuerty finally reached his goal. August 27th, 1878 exactly 106 years before I was born. Obviously, there was going to be a strong preternatural connection between myself and LaQuerty. And how exactly did you come to be involved with LaQuerty? Well, it took some time. I was born on the same day as Sir Donald Bradman, so naturally I felt a preternatural connection with him. I played cricket throughout my youth, but I could never get my average high enough, so I had to look for my true connection elsewhere. I found out I also shared my birthday with Ed Gein, a misunderstood soul, who even died in the same year that I was born. So naturally I felt a preternatural connection with him. A reincarnation of sorts. And who was he? A farmer slash serial killer. LaQuerty sold his schema to Remington, who in turn sold it under the name Remington No. 2. And they found the 9 volver in the shoebox along with my nipple belt. Oh, you ready to go? Uh, so, after a short stint at San Quentin, I started getting into politics because I also share my birthday with Linda B. Johnson, the 36th PUSANA, President of the United States of America and North America. But because of the skeletons in my closet, uh, because of my past, because I wasn't born in the US, I could never become President. But they will know my wrath. 
Anyway, it was then that I discovered liquidity, and the rest, as they say, is history. Is history indeed. His millions made, LaQuerty, for the first time in his life, rested on his laurels at the age of 59. By his 63rd birthday, he had become the 25th Sultan of Brunei, before returning to France in 1885. When he returned to Paris, France, Europe, after the whole Brunei Asia incident, he, uh, he lived a life of quiet luxury. He was put out to stud in, uh, in certain terms. And in 1890, uh, three days after his 71st birthday, sadly, Perry passed away. And as you can probably guess, the typewriter community was, they were devastated. Instead of taking to the streets with flowers, they, uh, they had their black typewriter ribbons. And uh, at his memorial, just hundreds and hundreds of typewriters were, um, were to be found. Even to this day, February 17, every year, you can find a couple of Remington number two typewriters sitting there on, uh, on Perry's grave. It's pretty awesome. That's why I'm proud of him, you know. It's a legacy. After La Quirty's passing, the typewriting world seemed unable to progress to the next bar on the paper. The world held its collective breath to see if someone would attempt an overthrow of La Quirty's legacy. And, 46 years later, someone dared to try. After the Brunei debacle, do you really think Laquerti lived out the last few years of his life quietly and died in peace? Think about the people he upset. Think about the powers he disturbed. Think about the year 1936. Viborak keyboard. You can type 100 words on Laquerti's keyboard without leaving the home row and 400 without leaving Dvorak's home row. You'll see something if you arrange those 500 words in a particular order. And it's not a coincidence. You can read all about this in my latest book, QWERTY vs. Dvorak, The Secret War. Excerpts are available online at http colon forward slash forward slash www.qwertyvsdvorak.com forward slash home forward slash index dot html.